Did you know that Jehovah's Witnesses do not celebrate their own birthdays? They don't celebrate any kind of religious observances at all because they're not supposed to be involved with anything except the Watchtower Society. They never join the military. Never. Jehovah's Witnesses. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 and 16, it says the following. Be beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Who are the Jehovah's Witnesses anyway? And are they really witnesses of Jehovah God Almighty? Well, addressing the organization, it is nothing less indeed than wolves in sheep clothing because they offer a false God. They offer a false heaven. They offer a false way with false hopes and failed prophecies. Jehovah's Witnesses are a religious movement started by Charles Taze Russell. Charles Taze Russell drew his teaching from many sources, including the Seventh-day Adventist Church, drew his teaching from Freemasonry ideology, drew his teaching from Christadelphians, drew his teaching from numerous dark spirits of deception and his own misconstrued interpretation of the Bible. The leaders of the Jehovah's Witnesses are a group of men out of Brooklyn, New York that heads the organization called the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. The Watchtower Society that strictly governs the Jehovah's Witnesses have had five different presidents from the beginning to present. First president, Charles Taze Russell. Second, Joseph Rutherford. Third, Nathan Noor. Fourth, Frederick Franz. Fifth, Milton Henschel. And the present one, Don Adams. All of these men, throughout the time they were each president, brought in their own ideas and contradictions against each other that has caused the Jehovah's Witness organization to be reformed constantly throughout the years. Anything that is real, anything that is true, never needs to be revised and never needs to be reformed. Talking about the Holy Bible, never once has it been revised because it has always been true. The emphasis of the Jehovah's Witnesses organization is not loyalty to God, but loyalty to their organization. After declaring to their followers that they cannot understand the Bible on their own, listen carefully, the Watchtower Society, who are spearheaded by men, produced and published their own misinterrupted or interpreted version of the Holy Bible called the New World Translation. I held one in my hand. The one that I held in my hand was quite expensive and quite beautiful, gray, leather bound, and it's so disheartening to know that such a beautiful looking book could be filled with deception. Talking about the New World Translation, 
I want to share with you four examples, and there are many throughout their scripture, their Bible. But I have chosen four main ones that pertain to Jesus Christ. That I want to show you that in their Bible, the New World Translation, they have changed the words so that the verse means something completely different. Let's look at example number one. In the Holy Bible, which is the Christian Bible, Titus chapter 2 and verse 13 says the following. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Pay attention to the bold letters, God and Savior, with the underline. It says, waiting for the great and glorious appearing of God and Savior, Jesus Christ, God and Savior refers to the one and same person. When Paul said, waiting for the great God and Savior, and then he said Jesus Christ, he is referring to Jesus Christ as both God and Savior, one person. Now look at what the New World Translation did. In the same Titus chapter 2 and verse 13, the watchtower now says, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. Notice the of included. Notice it says God and of. It didn't say God and the Savior. It says God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. What did they do when they add those words? God and Savior are now meant to be two different persons. In other words, God is one person and Jesus Christ is now a different person. Because remember, their aim is to demote Jesus, to devalue Jesus, to de discredit Jesus. Why? Because they don't believe in Him. So they wrote the New World Translation to make when they teach, it goes in accordance to what they believe. Let's look at the second example. From the Holy Bible of Christians, 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, it says, To those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So again, Peter the Apostle is referring to Jesus as both God and Savior as one. Look at the New World Translation with me by the Watchtower. Same Peter, 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. The Watchtower says, To those who have acquired a faith as precious as ours through the righteousness of our God and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Did you see the difference? They added words so that Jesus and God can be two different people completely. Let's continue. The third example. In the Christian's Holy Bible, the Apostle John wrote in John 1.1. 1, 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John the Apostle, now, can I have your attention for a little bit? Could you look at me for a short moment? Let me tell you that John the Apostle did not hear secondhand, thirdhand about Jesus. John who wrote this gospel was with Jesus personally for three and a half years. So he didn't, he wasn't just told about Jesus. He lived with Jesus and the other disciples for three and a half years. And so he says about Jesus, in the beginning was the word and the word, and the word word means Jesus. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus was God when he was on the earth. So now listen to the New World Translation. The watchtower now says in John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Did you see that? So what they are saying now by their mistranslated Bible, 
They are now saying that Jehovah God is a God and that Jesus Christ, if you would hear them say it from their own lips, this is what they would tell you, that Jesus is a little God, a small God. So in their opinion, even though they claim that they believe in only one God, they call Jesus a little God. So they say, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Now remember, they changed these things in their own produced and published Bible because if they don't change it, they cannot approach the world to preach their doctrines because the Bible of the Christians will contradict what they teach. So they had to spend money and lots of money to produce their own New World Translation and everything in their Bible called the New World Translation demotes Jesus Christ, removes Him from being deity. When you do that, in reality, you're left without a God. Are you with me so far? Let's look at the third, the fourth example, sorry. From the Christian's Holy Bible, in Luke chapter 23 and verse 43, Dr. Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke, says the following. He says, And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, comma, I say to you, comma, today you will be with me in paradise. The comma before the word today suggests that the thief would go to heaven the same day with Jesus. Let me read it for you again so you can get the understanding. The Holy Bible, look at the punctuations. The Holy Bible, Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now watch what the New World Translation did. And I'll tell you why they did it. This is what it says in their Bible. Truly, I tell you today. Look at the comma. Look at the comma in the Holy Bible. And look at the comma in the New World Translation. Let's look at it closely so you don't get lost. In the Holy Bible, it says, I say to you, comma, Today you will be with me in paradise. Now look at the New World Translation. The comma is after today. It says, truly I tell you today. In other words, what they are saying is that when Jesus said that he will be with him in paradise, he was saying it to him today, but that the thief would be in paradise a further date. Why did they do that? I don't know if you know this or not, but Jehovah's Witnesses, do not believe in a heaven. They do not believe in a hell. Therefore, they have to change it so that it matches their teaching. I've known a few Christians that used to come to church. That actually when they came to church, they brought a New World Translation. And as innocent as they were, they didn't know the difference. They taught they had a good Bible. My brothers and sisters, how many of you know that it's time to wake up? We've been sleeping too long. The New World Translation is messed up completely. What is it that attracts people to the Jehovah's Witnesses? Many things. Number one, they claim to have an authoritative answer to life's major problems. If you look, if you go and pass by Jehovah's Witnesses that are standing with a little trolley or a book stand at some street corner or, or some place, and you pass them by, their watchtower pamphlets are always so attractive. People get attracted to it because they, they claim to have an authoritative answer for life's major problems. You see, in life there are problems, and then there are major problems. Number two, what is it that attracts people to the Jehovah's Witnesses? They claim to offer divine guidance. They claim to offer divine guidance. 
You may say, Pastor, but there's nothing wrong with that. Well, well, skin deep, it may sound legit. But the Bible teaches us that it is the Holy Spirit that gives divine guidance, not an organization. Number three, why are people so attracted to the Watchtower Society, the Jehovah's Witnesses? They claim to offer genuine solutions. And that's what people want. However, I need to remind you, I have not been around just yesterday. I wasn't born yesterday. I've lived already half of my life. I still have half to go. And with the rest of the half that I have, brother, brother. Let me tell you something. They claim to offer genuine solutions. But I have personally known Jehovah's Witnesses here on my little island. Can I tell you that one of the top JWs on this island, who has now already passed away, I think about a year ago. I had several confrontations with him. I say this respectfully yet truthfully. The man was a teacher of teachers in the Jehovah's Witnesses and he was a drunkard. How can you offer genuine solutions when you haven't found a solution for your own? Fourthly, they stress on moral and family issues. Which again is important to many people because the family units are suffering across the world. And so they're very, I don't want to use the word smart, I think preferred, they're very deceitful. It's just like the serpent in the garden that approached Adam and Eve in such a way that they could not help but believe and take a bite and got destroyed. It's the same thing with the Jehovah's Witness. They're just like the serpent in the garden. So deceitful and so beautifully approaching people that many people take of the bite and are lost. Many are lost forever. And hopefully through teachings like this one I'm giving, many thousands would be able to come out from Jehovah's Witness and find True salvation. Number five, we're talking about why people are so attracted to Jehovah's Witness, the Watchtower Society. They go looking for people instead of wanting or waiting for people to come to them. Think about it. Most Christians, most Christians don't make an effort to witness to their co-workers. In other words, their co-workers are witnessing to them the F, the B, the R, the U, and the T, and the Z. But we don't make the effort to minister to our co-workers. Jehovah's Witness now doesn't wait for people to come into their uh, kingdom hall. They go out to look for people. I mean, think about it. How many times have you invited somebody to church? And they give you excuses like, oh boy, it's too far. I'll, I'll think about it and maybe another time. But now the Jehovah's doesn't ask them to come to the kingdom hall. They go to their own house with their books to teach them. That's attractive for many people. Because you can be giving yourself a pedicure while they teach you. You can be giving yourself a manicure and even a foodicure while they're teaching you. Who wouldn't want that? And so these things attract people to the Jehovah's Witness organization. Jehovah's Witness have three main beliefs. May I say they have hundreds of beliefs. But three main beliefs from where all other beliefs stem from. Number one, divine guidance come only through the Watchtower Society. Think about that. You know, God didn't make us fools. The devil has made many people fools, but God didn't make us fools. Think about it. The watchtower claims 
that they are the only group, society, organization that offers divine guidance. What they are saying is then that these handful of men from Brooklyn, New York probably are God's son from heaven that has the light to share with people. That's what they're really saying. If they claim that the Watchtower Society is the only organization with divine guidance, then indirectly they're saying that the men that actually govern the Watchtower Society are the only ones capable of giving you divine guidance. But again in John 16, 13, it says, However, he, when the Holy Spirit of truth come, he will guide you into all truth. When they say this, that the Watchtower Society is the only organization that can give divine guidance, they are saying then that any disagreement with the Watchtower Society is a direct disagreement with God. Now let me tell you something. I am your pastor. But never ever would I tell you that if you disagree with me, you're disagreeing with God. That's not my place. I'd be a fool to do that. Now if you disagree with the word of God, you're disagreeing with God. But they say that if you disagree with the Watchtower Society, you are completely disagreeing with God. Secondly, Talking about them offering the, the only divine guidance that is available. Any criticism like I am doing at the moment. And may I say I'm not getting a dollar to do it. Any criticism against the Watchtower Society is sinful and satanic. Do you see my horns? Second. Are you following me brothers and sisters? Second main belief of the Jehovah's Witness, the Watchtower Society, Jehovah's Witness alone has the truth of God. But I question that. Because how can you have the truth of God when you reject Jesus Christ, who is the truth of God? But they claim, their, their second main belief is that they alone has the truth. Of God. Brothers and sisters, can I tell you something? Those of you listening around Belize and around the world, I hate to say this, but I need to say this because I am a pastor and I put myself to shame by saying this, but I'd gladly be shamed that Christ may be exalted. I don't know who your favorite prophet is, I don't know who your favorite pastor may be. But I want to tell you this, it doesn't matter how many PhD degrees they have, it doesn't matter how anointed and how many revelations they have received. I need to tell you no man on this earth has the complete truth. Jesus Christ alone has that. And that's why we should not deify a man. That's why we should not hold a man in the position that Jesus alone deserves. So, their second main claim is that they have the only truth. This claim of theirs separates them from the rest of the entire world. Meaning, their followers are demanded not to have any involvement in any social, political, or military systems of this world. The third main belief of the Jehovah's Witness, Watchtower Society, is that they teach that all other religions, including Christianity, or I should say mainly Christianity, they teach that all other religions are false and controlled by Satan. That's why if you start to become observant, you will realize that what I'm about to tell you is true. Jehovah's Witnesses 
you will find only knocking on your door or standing on the street corner trying to stop you to witness to you. Other than that, they don't go anywhere unless they have to go to the store to shop. But you don't see them anywhere else at all. They're always locked up in their house. Why? They are taught by the Watchtower Society everything else in the world besides Jehovah's Witness is satanic. Think about that. The confinement. That also means that they cannot salute any country's flag at all. No reciting of the Pledge of Allegiance. No military recruitment. And no birthday celebration. Did you know that Jehovah's Witnesses do not celebrate their own birthdays? They don't celebrate any kind of religious observances at all. Because they're not supposed to be involved with anything except the Watchtower Society. They never join the military. Never. Come the 21st of September when it's Independence Day in Belize. And all Belizeans go out. To recite the national anthem and to salute the flag of our country of Belize. Jehovah's Witnesses are nowhere to be found. Because the flag is satanic of whichever country they are in. The, the government is satanic. Religions are satanic. Everything is satanic. Even their birthdays. No celebration at all. How, I wonder how it feels to take all the joy out of life. Can you even imagine that? No time to celebrate, no time to rejoice. Jehovah's Witnesses teach that, number one. To have eternal life, one must become loyal to the Watchtower Society. Now, I want, I want any one brother or sister in this place... Any one of you to raise your voice. One. How does a person in the Christian faith receive eternal life? Well, well, don't say it under your breath. I want somebody to say it aloud. Through Jesus Christ. Jehovah's Witnesses are taught that they receive eternal life through the Watchtower Society, the Jehovah's Witness Organization. Their is where you get your eternal life. Secondly, they're not allowed to take blood transfusion. It's a sin against God. Because of this, many of their faithfuls have died foolishly and prematurely. Do you know how many... Uh, well, let, me, let me also add something to that. In case you didn't know this, and I'm not judging and condemning anybody that has a vegan diet, vegetarian diet. But do you know that Jehovah's Witnesses try their best to eat as healthy as they can? You know why? Because if they get sick, they will die. If they get sick, they're not allowed to take blood in any form or shape. Because according to the Watchtower Society, taking blood transfusion is equal to what the Holy Bible teaches. You're not supposed to eat blood. Again, it's misinterpreted. Blood transfusion is not eating blood. And because of that, many Jehovah's Witnesses have been in hospitals that could live if they could take last minute medications from the doctor but they die because they're taught blood transfusion is a sin from God of God when you do it Jehovah's Witnesses teach soul sleep can I see your hand those of you at home especially do you know what soul sleep is anybody in here do you know what soul sleep is you got to be kidding me. Thank you, Steve. 
Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, believe and teach soul sleep. What is soul sleep according to them? Soul sleep is when you die and you cease to exist completely. And hopefully when Jesus comes back, he will resurrect you. I use the word hopefully because everything that the Jehovah's Witness teach is uncertain. They cannot be assured of anything. They are only hoping. And so they, they, they teach that when someone dies, they call it soul sleep. You go into the grave and you cease to exist. And when Jesus comes back, hopefully he will resurrect you and you will become a person again. Paul the Apostle taught in the New Testament to be absent from the body is to be present with Christ. Meaning, instantly when a Christian dies, he goes to be with the Lord. Equally, when a non-Christian, an unbeliever dies, instantly they go to hell. Now listen, those of you that are watching from around the world, th this is just a little touch on the icing here concerning life after death. But if you want to know more, I have done a video that goes into depth concerning death and beyond. And that's the name of the video, Death and Beyond. If you want to know exactly what happens to believers of Jesus and non-believers when they die. Jehovah's Witnesses teach and believe there is no hell. The Bible clearly teaches, especially in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, 16, sorry. It teaches that there was a rich man who died. There was a man by the name of Lazarus who died. One went into paradise, the other one went into hell. And hell was as real as it ever was. Immediately after he died. There is a hell. And I want to tell you, there is no soul sleep. What do Jehovah's Witnesses believe about Christianity? If you're a Christian, you need to know what the Watchtower thinks of you. You need to know what Jehovah's Witnesses think of you. With the big smile on their face, when they're talking with you out there, you need to know what they believe about you. Number one, the Jehovah's Witnesses believe the Christian church is a satanic deception. Number two, Christianity is Babylon the Great. Number three, Christianity is the way of eternal death. Number four, Christianity is demonized. Number five, the God of the Christians is Satan himself calling my Lord Jesus Christ Satan. Calling your Lord Jesus Christ Satan. If nobody ever told you what Jehovah's Witnesses think of you, I just told you what they think of you. Quickly, the doctrines of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Concerning the Trinity, Christians believe that God is three persons in one. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One person operating three different ways, three different personalities. Jehovah's Witness concerning the Christian's Trinity, they say Jehovah God is one, not Trinity. That's why they say Jesus is a little God. Because he is somebody completely different. He is not Jehovah God. So they concerning God, they say God is one, not Trinity. Secondly, Jehovah God is not omnipresent. When I read my Bible, the only person, supernatural being, that is not omnipresent is Satan. The Bible says Satan runs through, to and fro throughout the whole earth. Why does he go back and forth on the earth? Because he can't be everywhere the same time. 
The Bible teaches of God that He is omnipresent. He is everywhere in the universe at the exact same time. Why is that important to know and believe? Because without God being everywhere, nothing would exist. Have you ever thought about that? There would be no heaven without God. There would, there would be no hell without God. There would be no people without God. There would be no earth without God. It is God who gives life to everything. And if he would only be in Russia at one time and not in Belize, Belize would cease to exist while he was in Russia. Do you understand? The Bible teaches our God is omni. Present, but Jehovah's Witnesses teach that God is not omnipresent. Thirdly, Jehovah's Witnesses teach that God is not omniscient. No wonder. Can I have your attention? Do you know why people lie to people? Why do people lie to people? Because when you're lying to somebody, they don't know you're lying to them. No wonder then the Jehovah's Witnesses can teach deceit because they think that God doesn't know everything. So when they lie, they're getting away with their lie. They think. But God is omniscient. God knows everything. We can lie to each other because of our finite little minds. But we can't deceive God. We can't lie to God because God knows everything at the same time. But Jehovah's Witnesses say of their Jehovah God that he doesn't know everything. Concerning Jesus Christ in the Trinity, Jehovah's Witnesses say that Jesus Christ is the first creation of God. Meaning Michael the archangel. Remember that Charles Taze Russell came out of SDA. The Seventh-day Adventist Church. And that's exactly what the Seventh-day Adventist Church did. That Jesus is Michael the Archangel. So he got this logic from that source. Concerning Jesus, he was created by God. Concerning Jesus in the Trinity, the JWs say that Jesus Christ was recreated, not resurrected from the dead. He was recreated. When he died, he died, and God just made him all over again. He wasn't resurrected. I thought that on the seventh day, God said he rested. Isn't that what the Bible said? He created the world and everything in the world in six days. And the Bible says in the book of Genesis, on the seventh day, he rested. But according to the, Je the Jehovah's Witnesses, he came out from his hammock and had to recreate Jesus again because some Roman soldier killed him. So they had to make him a second time and maybe just a little better version concerning the Holy Spirit. The Jehovah's Witnesses teach the Holy Spirit is an impersonal, powerful force like the wind. Oh, brother, how wrong they are. How many of you have heard from the Holy Spirit before? Can I see a hand? Yes. He is a person, a real person, loving, caring person. Concerning salvation. Talking about some of the doctrines of the Jehovah's Witness. Concerning salvation. The Jehovah's Witness teach that salvation is by work. And may I add, hard work. Why do I say hard work? Because do you know that the Jehovah's Witnesses, the followers are taught that by them knocking on doors and proselytizing, they are earning their salvation. And when a follower of Jehovah's Witness would ask one of their leaders, how far along in my salvation am I? They don't know. They just hope that one day you get saved through knocking on door. 1 John 5.13 says this. These things, talking about the Christian's holy Bible. These things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know, that you may know Listen, that you may know that you have eternal life. 
Jehovah's Witnesses, even though the Watchtower Society claim that their followers will receive eternal life by being a part of the, the, the Watchtower Society, they are never certain of their salvation. Christianity, the Holy Bible tells us, we can know that we have eternal life. I don't have to worry if I die tonight. I don't have to think if I'm going to heaven or hell. I know to whom I've committed my life and that he is able to keep it until the day he returns. Concerning salvation, now you talk about being hopeless and how lost the followers are to believe the hopelessness. Jehovah's Witnesses claim that only 144,000 people called first class Jehovah's Witnesses dies and go to heaven, which has already happened, by the way. In other words, that elite 144,000 died and went to be with God a long time ago. Therefore, the second class Jehovah's Witnesses, who are every other Jehovah's Witness still on earth, the second class JWs at their death are recreated to live on earth, never in heaven. Now, now why would I want to follow that organization? Everybody in the world is looking for hope and they're talking hopelessness. Are you with me? Now the third class concerning salvation, the third class, that's you and me. That's the world. The third class, which are all of us Jehovah's Witnesses, are given a second chance to earn their salvation after death. So those Jehovah's Witnesses that are probably the most unruly, and every other religion that are lost, third class, we have to make sure that we Earn this salvation according to the Jehovah's Witnesses. The last thing I read in the Bible is that Jesus paid it all on the cross and gave it as a free gift to each person. Salvation is not a merit, is not by personal merit, but by the grace of Jesus. Jehovah's Witnesses are never certain. If they will see Jehovah God only if their works are good enough. Can I ask you something, those of you all around the world and those of you in this building? How many of you, only raise your hand if you really believe this. How many of you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that one day you'll see Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Now, you know and I know that this certainty, this surety has nothing to do with our performance. It has everything to do with what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Is the Jehovah's Witness and their Watchtower Society a false organization? Well, let's do just a couple tests very quick. Test number one, the Jehovah's Witness New World Translation Bible is inaccurate. I showed you four examples. But do you know that both Christian and non-Christian Greek scholars universally reject the Jehovah's Witness New Translation? Not just Christian scholars, even non-Christian scholars that have read through the New World Translation considers it nonsense. Both Christians and non-Christian Greek scholars agree that JW's New World Translation of the Bible is the worst, most twisted, and inaccurate translation of the Holy Bible. Both Christian and non-Christian Greek scholars agree that the Watchtower Society has purposely mistranslated the Holy Bible to deny the deity of Jesus Christ. Test number two. Are you ready for this? This is horrific. You sure you're going to be able to sleep tonight? This is horror movie. The watch, the JW's Watchtower Society is very, very inaccurate. I mean really inaccurate. Listen. 
The Jehovah's Witness Watchtower Society has inaccurately and falsely predicted the end of the world 13 times. Hey guys, we're still in this world. 13 times they have predicted the end of the world. They have pre predicted that Armageddon would come. Which means the end time battle that Jesus would come back the second time. Third, I mean, you know, if somebody gets something wrong one time, you're able to forgive them. But the second time, you might have to drink a Coke before you forgive. And the third time, you might have to eat three full meals before you forgive. And the fourth time, it's like, get lost. You are next to crazy. Thirteen times. The Watchtower Society said the world would end in 1877 and it didn't happen. So they set a new date. They said in 1886, it didn't happen. In 1914, in 1915, in 1925, and the world did not end. They continued. They said that the world would end in 1939, 1940, 1941, 1942, 1943, 1946, 1950, 1951. We are now in 2024. From 51 to 2024, no more prophecies. They finally got it. They finally got it. 13 times that Jesus would come back. And Jesus looked down from heaven and said, hi. You know, the Bible says no one knows the date or the hour. Who, who are these guys from Brooklyn, New York? Maybe in the 500, uh, what do you call them? Corporation, whatever you call it. And they might have a lot of mega money, but they have no S-E-N-S-E. Thirteen times. Brothers, if I taught the false gospel to you one time, you probably would forgive me, but I wouldn't be around today if I was misleading you, that's for sure. So they finally came up. They finally came up with something they thought was smart. Jesus already came back invisibly. They, they, they think they're dealing with first graders. We just realized we didn't need to prophesy 13 times. The first time we prophetically said that he would come back, he came back just that he did it invisibly. May I tell you, the Bible says that when Jesus comes back the second time, all eyes will see him. Even those who have pissed him, the Bible says. I wonder whose witnesses these really are. Thirteen failed prophecies. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 22 says, When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that thing which the Lord is, is that thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. Very simple criteria. If you prophesy and it doesn't come true, use duct tape. Don't say another word. The Christian Bible, called the Holy Bible, on the other hand, contains 2,500 prophecies. Your Bible, my Bible, contains 2,500 prophecies. Brothers and sisters, 2,000 of them are already fulfilled accurately. 332 of these prophecies were fulfilled when Jesus came the first time to this earth. And the final 500 prophecies that must be fulfilled will be fulfilled when Jesus comes the second time. Can I let you into a little secret? You promise you won't say that I said this? No other holy book on earth of any other religion has any prophecies in there. Only the Holy Bible. No other book. The, the, the slightly holy Quran. The, 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 the what, what do you call the Hindu one? The Vedas or... Yeah, the, the Vedas or... All the holy books out there that they say is holy. 
might not be holy as in like God, but has a lot of holes. Not one of these holy books. You, if I am lying, just give me a million dollars and let's settle it. No other holy book on earth contains not even one prophecy. Because they would fail. The only Bible that has 2,500 prophecies is the holy Bible of the Christians. Woo, you should be happy like heaven. I almost said hell. No holy book of any religion worldwide contains prophecies, not even one. Only your Bible, my brothers and sisters. What can we do if you're a Jehovah's Witness and want to live for Jesus Christ? Number one, don't be discouraged. It's never too late to walk in truth. Number two, Remember, you're not alone. Millions of JWs have left the Watchtower Society and have found salvation through the grace of Jesus Christ. Number three, take the initiative to learn more about Jesus from the Holy Bible with the help of a mature Christian. Number four, accept God's free gift of salvation that He freely offers through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Number five, God wants you to confess your sins and accept His forgiveness through the shed blood of Jesus. He forgives anyone. He forgives even Satanists. As long as they're willing to repent. Christianity is not exclusive. Christianity is inclusive of any person on this earth that is ready to repent. Brothers and sisters, this is just about 10% of what Jehovah's Witness believe. But it gives you a picture of what they believe and how lost they really are. Now, I've made a prayer of repentance of salvation for those listening from around the world and around the country who believe in your private headquarters called your home. And for those of you in here that may have been involved with Jehovah's Witness. Again, this is nothing to be ashamed about. Lots of people was once involved in Jehovah's Witness. Can I ask you, honestly and truthfully, has anybody in here ever been involved with JWs before? Can I see your hand? The only reason I want you to truly pray this prayer is because being involved with a religion that operates with demonic, deceitful spirits. If you do not repent of this and do not renounce this, these deceiving spirits will keep you back from going deeper with God and walking with Him closer. So I'd like to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. If you've ever been baptized with the Jehovah's Witnesses, if you've ever took their teachings, if you've ever entertained them in your home, if you've ever attended their kingdom hall, now you're a Christian and you really want to walk deeper with Christ, pray this prayer with me from your heart. And pray it aloud. Those of you watching around the world, this is for you. Dear God, Forgive me for trying to make my own way to you. When you have provided the way for me through Jesus Christ, I confess I am a sinner and I truly repent of all my sins before you. Please forgive me for trying to earn my salvation through good works in the Jehovah's Witnesses organization. I now know you have given me salvation as a free gift through the Lord Jesus Christ, your son. I believe Jesus is the only way to the Father. I believe Jesus is nothing less than God. I believe 
that Jesus Christ is nothing less than God, the Son of God. I now turn away from the lies and deception of the Watchtower Society and their teachings. I put my faith in Jesus Christ alone. I believe Jesus died for my sins and that He rose again on the third day to give me eternal life. I now make Jesus Christ my only Savior for now and forever. Thank you for your forgiveness and for your love. Thank you for accepting me as your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for those in this building today who have just completely said, I turn away from the Watchtower Society to walk with Jesus Christ fully and completely. I thank you for those from around the world and our country of Belize that have turned their backs on the Watchtower Society and have turned to Jesus Christ alone. Now, Lord, you fill that space that was devoted to the lies and the deceits of demonic spirits and allow your Holy Spirit now to lead them, to guide them, to fill them every day that they live for you. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody said, Amen indeed. <music>